Jeff talking. Oh, <laughs> I told you, stuck in my head still. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Leave Reacts. So hope everyone's having a good day. I know I am. We are back with the Chicago Transit Authority, the debut album once again. I couldn't help myself, but it's also a request, so <laughs> kind of have to. But I'm excited because I love this album. Every single song I've listened uh, to from it has been absolutely stellar. And we're going to be doing two tracks, one from side one and one from side four. First one being one written by Mr. Robert Lamb. Uh, does anybody really know what time it is? <laughs> and um, that reminds me of, you know, where does anyone know where the time goes? Or who knows where the time goes, whatever it is, by uh, Fairport Convention. Um, and then Someday... August 29th, 1968, which was the uh, the whole world is watching. It was a, 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 a phrase chanted by the war demonstrators, let's say anti-war. I can't say stuff in the first couple minutes. You already know. But it was at the Conrad Hilton Hotel in the 1968 convention. Um, apparently, this song has, I guess, stuff to do with it as well. Um, I don't know exactly, but our patron surely requested it, and she mentioned that it had uh, it was, the song was kind of adopted as a, I guess, an anthem of sorts. I, I don't know. I think that's what she said. Um, so, time first, and then someday second. There you go. Um, and yeah, thank you to Shirley for this request. Let's go. If you want to subscribe, help a brother out. Click that icon right below my face, somewhere down there. I can link my Chicago playlist right up there. We have a cool Patreon if you want to join. If you want to get a video just like this, join the $15 tier or up. You get one free request a month, or you can do it through PayPal. It's up to you. All right, Chicago. Does anybody really know what time it is? In three, two, one, go. It sounds like Lamb wrote this. <laughs> this is different. Why? 
face. Is that Terry doing the backup vocals? What a good feeling song. That was awesome. <laughs> Someday. Another Robert song singing. And Peter. You feel the rumblings as your head comes crumbling down. Do you know what I mean? Run, you better run, you know the end is getting near. Feel the wind that something hot comes. <laughs> oh, Danny. Twist and turn your head <laughs> right back. Killing it, bro. Now you know what I mean. Can you look around you now and tell us what to be? Can you look inside yourself and tell us what you see? As you feel the rumbling.
<laughs> I love when they do that. Man, I did not hear a single guitar note <laughs> in that entire eight minutes, two songs. I don't think I heard a single guitar. I heard Terry's backup vocals basically in the first track. That was it. So in our Chicago meter, you know, all horns, all guitar right there. And this is all horns. And I love it, man. I like both sides. I just do that because it's funny. But it is true that they have the like guitar driven songs. And then they have the, I guess, piano and horns, you could say here. But in that second track, oh my God, the rhythm section, Jesus Christ, bro. Peter and Danny are duo, bro. Seriously, they really are, man. They pair together so, so well. Uh, Danny's just thunderous drums. And then Peter just, he's got such a widely ranged talent when it comes to the bass. Like any situation, any type of style you're going for in whatever section it may be, man, like he's got it for you, man. He, um, him and Danny, like I said, just a match made in heaven for that rhythm section. Um, and then of course, Robert on those keys, bro. The piano was honestly the best instrument in the first song and almost in the second one too, I'd say. Like it really obviously drove most of the songs and then the horns and the rhythm section filled out the rest. Um, I love the questions that the first <laughs> song ponders, you know, obviously, cause I love, you know, deep thinking about stuff, you know, ruminations on such things, obviously. And, um, you know, I, 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 time is a man-made concept. Honestly, everything is a man-made concept when you think about it. We just, you know, it's a concept. So someone conceptualized it, obviously. It's not like it just grew out of the, tr you know, out, off a tree or something. Um, so it's, it's like the whole, it's like when someone, you know, someone says, you know, word, that word's made up and then all words are made up, you know, it's a good reply to say to them. It's true. You know, uh, everything's made up. Everything is some man-made construct. I mean, other than if you just go look outside and see like all, you know, all of nature, that's not us. We're a part of that though, you know, and we'd like to act like we're not a part of it, but we are. And we treat our brothers and sisters, uh, of the animal kingdom and of all sorts of sizes and shapes we treat them very badly and that's our you know fellow brethren on this planet we treat them like shit we kill them you know we eat them i mean that's just nature though unfortunately you know i, I was raised on a horse farm you know i'm not like a vegetarian nothing I, i'm just saying all that shit i still eat it you know but i'm saying it's what we do you gotta be honest about it we do you know do like mass slaughterings of things and it, it's it's terrible man um but they don't have time, you know, they don't worry about time. They just exist, you know. I watch, I feed the birds outside our house every day and I like watching them in the morning. And um, they, uh, you know, they don't want any concept of time. They wake up, they eat, they go fly around, they talk to their friends, they eat again, they go to sleep, you know. I mean, it's what we do too, but we just put so much stock in what we do, you know. Obviously, there are powerful people that make big decisions and, you know, there is power, somewhat power in the people as well, you know. As it demonstrated in that second song, there is power in the people because um, there's a lot more of us than there are of them. So, you know, if we actually get together to do something, watch out, you know, because um, there are many things that have happened especially in our country that need to be protested, you know? Um, and then other things, not so much. Um, so, you know, it's a fine balance. Like I said, I try to keep this neutral, you know, as much as I can, because I've heard, this be honest, the most part, y'all know I'm, I'm pretty much in the middle anyway. So it's just like, I don't, I see the bullshit on both sides. Um, and I, I, I never really bought into the whole partisan thing. You know, I kind of saw through it just like I did with religion pretty early. I was like, why are there only two? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was my first question. I was like, well, that's kind of rigged to begin with. There's only two choices. You know what I mean? But it is what it is. Right. Um, I, I'm glad that they had that song, you know, the some days or whatever. Cause, um, you know, there's just so many things that happen in our country that it kind of, it's like an option paralysis. It's like that there's so much to keep up with even back then, you know what I'm saying? There was stuff going down left and right, but that was a big thing. The DNC convention in 1968, you know, Chicago, big things are happening, you know, and it's basically, uh, I think it was before this album came out by like a year, right? This came out in 69. Yeah. So that was the year before. Um, and it's just crazy, man, that they can, um, I don't know, incorporate that stuff into the music, like that chant, which is, you know, the whole world is watching, um, which is true because it was the first, uh, well, was, it, was that Korea? It was the first, like, not live broadcasted war, basically, you know? And I think that shocked people probably because I think Americans had that, um, what's the word, that Hollywood view of war, you know, because the stuff that they saw from overseas in World War II and Korea and all that, that was all 
you know, just like, uh, what's the, what's the called? Not the, the RSO. What is it? Um, whatever, like the military outreach, you know, sort of just, you know, I hate to use the word propaganda, but it, you know, but it's our propaganda, you know, it's okay to say it. it this is what, this is what it was back then. Um, yeah. So war bonds, right. <laughs> and, um, it, it's just crazy that that was the first one and people just couldn't handle it because they had had this other idea of war and what it was. It's some heroic fight against evil not that war <laughs> especially not that war that war was just death it was just absolute death on both sides uh for no uh fucking reason whatsoever you know at the end of the day we ran with our nah i don't want to say ran with our tail between our legs because that's not true we just um we sur not even surrendered we just left you know because it's what's the point you know all these people are dying for what you know we're dying they're dying what are what's actually getting accomplished you know there's there are you know if you want to be in the most realist terms possible you know there are i guess in, in that theater of things of war and they have got whole studies and you know there's war theory and stuff like that people go to school for war like it's a system that we have you know and it's just crazy to me man if someone who's very i wouldn't say non-confrontational but i'm very not violent you know what i'm saying like i think that's like the last resort sort of thing um but it just doesn't i don't know that just doesn't set well with our uh current system because there's money to be made can't did you forget <laughs> there's stuff there's money to be made we got stuff to do you know it's crazy to me we've totally monetized the you know slaughter of just people I'm sad, man. This video is probably going to demonetize. My apologies. But, you know, oh, why am I apolog apologizing to you guys? I should be apologizing to myself. Sorry, Lee, for demonetizing your own video, you know. <laughs> um, but, I mean, that's what the subject of the, of the song is anyway. And that's what it is. This war is a terrible fucking thing. It's evil and it's bad and it needs to be stopped everywhere, you know. But, other side. It's never going to happen, unfortunately. It's never going to be a peaceful utopia, no matter how hard we try, because everybody is different, every culture is different, and everybody has different values, and they, uh, we don't see the eye to eye people, you know, uh, I say other, you know, governments and governments and how they run their countries, not the people themselves, obviously, because they, they don't have anything to do with it. They vote, I guess, but some countries they don't vote, you know, they can't, and I think that's, we have to remember that, we have to separate the people from the government, even though the government is the people, you know? I don't know. Kind of gets complicated, I guess, if you get into the weeds of it. But what it comes down, what it boils down to, is that war is something that is evil and it needs to go away. We've been doing it for a very long time. We've perfected it. We've completely mastered it. We are the masters of war. You know, it's not one person. It's the our, it's our entire species. We're armed to the teeth. You know what I'm saying? Like we we're just ready for anything to pop off because we just want it to pop off. Deep down, I think. I think that's what most people want. I think that's crazy because uh, we are all brothers and sisters. We need to act like it. You know what I'm saying? Like this is why we're here. You know, we got to get along. We're stuck with each other. You got to get over it. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Sorry, I didn't mean to get off topic, but Chicago. It's, it's Chicago just inspires me. But you know it. it I don't know. I, I, if I was around back then, I'd be protesting the war too, to be honest, if I wasn't drafted, you know, it, uh, it's, you know, it, you can't really blame anybody for going because they were kind of forced to, you know, but this is how it works. And like I said, I'm from a military family, so I see both sides of it, whatever. But um, I love the keys in both. Keys are absolutely great. Uh, Danny and Peter absolutely killing it in the second one too, especially in that second half. Um, but I think I like the first one more because like, I liked both because they both brought some questions to the surface that makes you think, you know, um, is it really worth it? And does anyone really know what time it is? You know, like nobody really knows. We have our, you know, agreed upon time, but is that really what time it is? I don't know. We'll never know. <laughs> um, thank you again, Shirley B. That was a great pick. As always, Chicago's the best. And I guess we got a couple songs left to finish off this album, but maybe we might as well finish it off. You know what I mean? Um, there's a long song called Liberation at the end. There's not freeform guitar. Uh, listen, we did questions. Um, we done beginnings. So we've basically done almost all of it. We got like two or three songs left, guys. That's crazy. I remember when we first started this album. Oh, so many moons ago. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's it out of me, guys. Hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching. And um, don't forget. Well, I was going to say fight the power, but fight the power? Yeah. <laughs>